name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. Image of the Holy Mother of God, she's called the Flame of Love. That's her name, the Flame of Love, Yama de Amor, the Flame of Love. She appeared to a holy woman in Hungary in this manner. And this poor woman, her name was Elizabeth, Elizabeth Kindleman. She was, of course, Catholic. She was married with six children in communist Hungary. So she was persecuted. Her husband died when they were in their 20s. So she's a young mama with six children, Roman Catholic, faithful. And so the communist government went after her. Anyone who remained faithful to their faith was persecuted. And so she was actually stripped of her job. So six children, a widow, no job, found herself on the streets and homeless with six children. It was a nightmare. And I share that with you to realize that there's no one beyond the reach of God. Amen? Amen. Do you know that Elizabeth actually lost her faith? She actually became what we'd call an atheist. Not what you call a malicious atheist. There's some atheists are kind of mean and cruel. They sort of get a kick out of it. That's actually sinful. But there are atheists who lose their faith because of terrible suffering in their life. Amen? That's the kind that she was. But you know what? Sometimes we think God is a mean and aggressive God, which is not true. I am an exorcist priest, and I've had to work with the devil for a long time. He doesn't like me too much, and I don't like him too much. And he's come to my room, by the way, physically in my room. After a successful exorcism or a deliverance, he comes to pay me a visit. He's pretty ugly, let me tell you. He's pretty nasty, and he has bad breath, let me tell you. But he's the dictator, not God. He's mean. He is the accuser, not God. Amen? Amen. So when I hear a Catholic come to me or any Christian for spiritual direction, and they're telling me they hear this voice of accusation, you know what I mean, over and over again, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. Oh, you're Catholic, but you're not good enough. That's always a warning signal. That's not the way that God works. Amen? Amen. The Lord, he did not accuse Elizabeth. He did not point his finger at her. He did not yell at her or curse at her. You know what he did? He wooed her back. He loved her. Amen? Amen. Sometimes it helps to see things three-dimensionally. So I want to give you a little tiny lesson in spiritual direction that is, I would say, extremely important. If you have an experience, a spiritual experience, where you are feeling pushed, you might think it's God, you're being pushed, almost against your will, to do something. And so it's like somebody's behind you, and they're pushing your back. In. And they're trying to make you go do something holy, something good. Knock it off right then and there, kneel down, and rebuke the devil. God doesn't normally push you, he draws you. So when God wants me to do something, he doesn't get behind me with a bat and hit me on the head and push me. You know what God does? Can I show you what Jesus does to me? Here I am, and here's Jesus. It's very important to realize that so in your spiritual life because as I'm praying over you right now I can see many of you have a bondage inside of you and over you I can just see it in the spirit that's called the gift of discernment of spirits I can see it 
And part of that is you feel like a mean God or a cruel God or a dictator God or a pushy God. All of that is fake. Amen? And not being mean, actually trying to be helpful. Don't worry about that. Say, in the name of Jesus, leave. Amen? The Lord doesn't push and punch. He woos and draws. Amen? And that's what he did to Elizabeth Kindleman, the great mystic in Hungary. And instead of yelling at her or shouting at her, he started to whisper to her. Isn't that what the prophet heard? He didn't hear God right in the earthquake, right, in the giant winds, the rain. He heard our God, our best friend, in a whisper. Elizabeth, I miss you. Trinidad, I miss you. Come back. Amen? And so he did that to Elizabeth. He began to whisper to her and sent some saints to talk to her in a gentle voice. And slowly, over a period of several years, he brought her back to church and back to Mass and back to the sacraments. Isn't he cool? Isn't God great? Does he hate you? Not for a moment. He loves everyone. Here's a quiz question for you. Does God hate Satan? No. Does Satan hate God? There's the problem, right? It's never on God's side. God is all love. To this day, he loves his angel son, Lucifer. But Lucifer hates his father, God. Amen? Comprendes, amigos? Isn't that important to understand? God is love. He hates no one or nothing. The problem with the devil is he hates God. Isn't that terrible? Isn't that sad? Well, the Lord Jesus gave us through Elizabeth Kindleman this amazing new devotion called the Flame of Love. And the Lord made some amazing promises too, by the way. Did you know that the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the history of the church is about to come upon us? Did you know that? Oh my gosh. Where have you been? So we're going to pray one of the prayers that has to bring about this victory. An amazing victory is coming. There's also a prayer, though, that our Lord gave to Miss Elizabeth. And the prayer is on the back of your card. It's called the Unity Prayer. It is really one of the most beautiful prayers that I've ever seen. It's like a poem. But does anyone here know the promise that our Lord Jesus Christ gave to Elizabeth Kindleman about this prayer? Oh boy, you each owe me one million dollars. I want to tell you now, are you ready? This is what God said to Elizabeth. It has been approved by the church. Our Lord said this. Every time you say this prayer, wherever you are in the world, I will come down from heaven and I will blind Satan. And if he is blinded, he cannot see you. And if he cannot see you, he cannot attack you. Amen. My goodness, the conference is over. Let's go home. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What a gift. What a promise. What a God. Amen. Amen. The Lord sees what we're going through. Amen? Amen. He sees what we're going through. And he's giving us weapons for these times. And with these weapons, brothers and sisters, we can't lose. Amen. Amen. Now, this is your shield. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray it together. This will protect you right now. We're going to blind Satan from this conference room. Can we do that? Yes. It's kind of fun, to be honest with you. We're going to blind him from this whole conference room so he can't see you and I. I'm going to give you an example. First, let's pray the prayer. Then I'm going to give you an example. We're going to say it again, okay? Here's the prayer. Would you say this after me, line by line? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, my adorable Jesus, My adorable Jesus. May, our May our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. 
May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together. To gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. 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 Is that a beautiful prayer? Yes. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. That was dictated by our Lord and Our Lady to Elizabeth. It has the imprimatur of Cardinal Erdo in Hungary. And then in the U.S., we have an outstanding bishop called Archbishop Chapu. He's an American Indian bishop, perhaps our finest bishop in the U.S., a wonderful bishop in any case. He gave it the imprimatur for the English language. Now, here's one of my experiences with this prayer. I was celebrating Holy Mass at my special chapel. I have more or less a healing chapel out in the woods outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And there where I live, I pastor when I'm not, I'm on the road a lot, but when I'm not traveling, I have a group of homeschooling families, Catholic homeschooling families. And they've each built their own home in the woods. And I have a chapel more or less in the center. And I have mass for them. But because we have so many blessings and miracles, people come from all over the country for mass too. So they join us. We send out an email bulletin when I'm in town and people know what time to come. So one day after Holy Mass, just about two years ago now, at the very end of mass, the very end of mass, I just gave the blessing, a woman stood up who was new to our chapel she began to scream. She began to scream in a wild way. It wasn't a normal way. Screaming. She began to flail her arms like this. Then she began to spit and foam at the mouth. You know, like, like an animal with rabies. What was that? Yes, yeah, she was manifesting a demonic presence. Amen? It's through your whole Bible, right? It's in our Catholic Bible, too. Well, she's spitting and she's foaming at the mouth and she's all swearing and screaming and raising her hands. So I asked my little prayer team to gather around her. I have, I have wonderful prayer warriors. We have miracles all the time. I want to tell you about one in just a minute, okay? But I had them gather around her, 10 of us, and I had them say this prayer with me. I had not yet diagnosed her. We don't do an exorcism normally on the spot. We have to do an interview, get permission from the bishop, you see, for a real exorcism. However, there's seven levels of demonic interference. Full exorcism is only one of them. We all have obsession, right? We have temptation, obstruction as well. There's many different levels of demonic infestations, another one, when things start to move in the house. There's different levels. And some of them can be very hard, just like possession. I wasn't sure what level she was at, but she was pretty high up there. So I had my team circle around her because it was an emergency, and I had them say this prayer after me. I wanted to test it because my daddy was a lawyer and a judge, and he taught me to be like a bit of a scientist. So I like to test things, you know what I mean? So I said, all right, Lord, I know the promise. We're going to give it a try now, a little science experiment, because the Lord said he would come down from heaven wherever you were, blind the devil. If he binds you to the devil, the devil cannot see you at all. If he can't see you, he cannot attack you. Amen? Amen? So we circled around her, and we said the prayer, and this is what happened. The lady is screaming, spitting, foaming. We're circled around her like this. We start the prayer we just said one minute. She went like this. Isn't God great? Yes. Now, have you noticed that God always gives his church, his bride, the gifts she needs when she needs them? Have you noticed that? They always come just when we need them. We need this prayer. Amen? Yes. I don't know about here in Trinidad, but I tell you what, in Atlanta, U.S., it's a nightmare right now. It's a nightmare. And especially the schools. 
All of the schools here, the public schools in the U.S. are a nightmare. Children are afraid somebody's going to kill them at school. And in our public schools, uh, teachers tell our kids that there is no God. They teach them atheism in our schools. You can't teach religion, but you can teach atheism. Loco, amen? Muy loco. And they teach them homosexuality, and they say that boys can go in the girls' bathroom and they feel like a girl that day. Is that insane? Our country has lost its mind. Amen? But it's, it's destroying our children. It's destroying them, truly destroying them. That's not an exaggeration. So what we do is we give this to every teenager we can find. We have them memorize this prayer, and on the way to school, they can say the prayer to keep them protected. Amen? Now, I want to show you what happened a second time, six months later, at my own chapel. Almost identical situation at the end of Holy Mass. Another woman, who again was new to our chapel, began to scream at the end of Mass. Almost identically. And flailed her arms wildly, began to spit and foam at the mouth. So this time I knew just what to do. I said, team! And they circled around her right then and there at the end of Mass. And we said this prayer. Can we say it again right now? Let's ask God to blind him not only from you, but from all of your family members right now. Amen? Let's blind him right now. Would you say this after me? My adorable Jesus. My adorable Jesus. May, our feet May our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together. To gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. Amen. You have a beautiful accent, don't you? I like the way you say that. It's like British Caribbean. It's very beautiful. Beautiful. You know, I was, I was a pastor in, I'm a missionary, and you ever heard of Belize? I was a pastor in Belize for like eight or nine years. And this reminds me of Belize. I'm feeling like at home right now, you know? Because we're, it's a Caribbean nation too, you see? And guess who the bishop put in charge of the charismatic movement for the whole country? Woo! Because I'm the craziest priest in the country, that's why. Amen? Amen? Well, we said this prayer for that poor lady who was doing the exact same thing. You want to guess what she did? Same thing. Exact same thing. Screaming and cursing and spitting and foaming. When we said the prayer, just like this. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. Amen. And he says to tell you, Trinidad, he will not let Satan destroy you. Yes. Amen. Yes. He will not do it. He is on a rescue mission. Amen. Yes. Why am I getting the Holy Spirit right now over my body? The goosebumps, the Holy Spirit bumps. He will not let this country be destroyed. Amen. Yes. And I want to listen. You pass out this prayer. You make a copy. Do you have a prime minister here? Make him a thousand copies. Get one to everybody. Pass this house. You know why? Because when the devil roams the earth, as the book of Job says, he'll be looking for Trinidad and Tobago. He won't be able to find you. He'll be blinded. He won't be able to find this country. Amen. I got to be really careful now because I start saying hallelujah and it's Lent. So if I say hallelujah, don't tell the bishop. I'm an hallelujah boy. You know what I mean? I can't help it. What did St. Augustine say? St. Augustine, right? We're in St. Augustine here. Is that right? Yeah. Isn't that cool? One of my favorite saints. Augustine said, we are an Easter people and hallelujah is our song. Amen. Yeah. Oh, I love St. Augustine. Isn't that cool? 
So I have a hard time during Lent, let me tell you. Because I burst out with hallelujahs day and night. Amen. Now I want to read a scripture for you. Because the word of God is healing. And you know, it's a holy book. It's God's book. And you know, the Pope put it together. It's actually a Catholic book. Amen. Now, friends, would you say this after me? It's one of my favorite. I bet you like it too. Psalm 34. Increíble. Increíble. Incredible. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you say this after me, friends? I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise always on my lips. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast. The humble shall hear and be glad. Glorify the Lord with me. Together let us praise his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me. From all, From all my terrors, he set me free. Amen. Amen. Is that cool? Yes. He wants to set Trinidad free from all of her terrors. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now this prayer, you have my, just copy this prayer and distribute it as much as you can. Let's make Trinidad the first country on the face of the earth completely invisible to Satan. Yes. Amen. Yes. Let's do it. Praise the Lord. Now, beloved, I'll tell you this much. I love Donald Trump. I don't know about you. you probably, if you get the fake media here, you think he's bad and evil. Our media, the United States of America, is utterly lying and corrupt. It's, if you get CNN, turn it off. Or better, if it comes back on, take a brick and throw it at your television. <laughs> Our media is totally false in the U.S. Don't believe any of it. We have a godly man in the White House right now. Did you know that one of my fellow priests was there two weeks ago? Guess what he did in the White House at Donald Trump's request? A Catholic exorcism has been done in the White House. Twice now. A total exorcism of the White House. Amen? Amen. There's a lot going on. By the way, my own community in Georgia, we've been praying for five years for our country, for an end to abortion, and for a pro-life president. We finally got one. Amen? And when he got it, he said, Lord, we need the Eucharist in the White House. Guess what President Trump started a month ago? They turned the Indian treaty room in the White House into a Catholic chapel. There's mass held there every week. In your White House. Amen? Now, the only reason I mention this is this. that we were praying, Everyone said he was going to lose. But two years before he was elected, I was watching the news in my brother's rectory. I don't have television in my house because I think... Most of television is corrupt. I don't have it. But I was doing a healing mass at another church in Texas. And there was an interview on one of the news stations with a businessman. And I was watching this businessman. I didn't know him that well, but I'd heard his name. As I listened to this businessman, I was impressed with his, his intelligence, with his wisdom, and his love for this country. As he answered the question so sincerely, the Holy Spirit came over me from above, over my head, and said to me, this man, I choose to be your next president. That was several years ago. I'll tell you more later, unbelievable things. But listen to this. All the media, all, all of us Christians prayed and fasted. They, they said the night he was elected, they couldn't believe it. We were saying this prayer 24 hours a day. Guess what all the media and all the liberal leaders were saying? We were blinded. They said, we were blinded. We were blinded. We didn't know how this happened. We, we said this prayer for the country every hour to blind the evil one. They didn't know that, but they kept saying we were blinded. Amen? Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you one more thing about our president. I mean to go into this too much, but give you an example of how it works on a national level, the blinding. This wonderful president, he's much better. He must told you bad things about him. First of all, even if you have a bad president, you're supposed to pray for him. Amen? 
This man is, is, there's a lot more going on here than meets the eye. His wife is now a practicing Catholic, Melania. Yes, she's now a practicing Catholic. And we're praying for him to enter the Catholic Church every day in my community. But I want to tell you that, beloved, on the day of the election, in fact, the whole week before the election, I was in Europe. And everyone there was saying the same thing, that this fellow was going to lose. But the Lord had told me the opposite. I said, no, 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 he's the pro-life candidate. God has his back. Everyone told me, no, no, no. Even the Catholics did. And so I went into my room that night broken because faithful men and women and priests that I admire said that. And I knelt down because his opponent is, was totally, totally pro-abortion and a practicing witch as well. Oh, it's true. She's a practicing witch. We know that for a fact. She's part of a witch's coven. Oh, yes, for years now. We knew that. We said, Lord, Lord, we have to have the pro-life president. And I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed in my room, and I began to weep. Lord, how can we have one more pro-abortion president? The country will not survive. Amen? Amen? We're killing 65 million abortion, 65 million children every year. How many children should we be killing a year? Zero. Amen? Not even one. So I, I said, Lord, I know whom you have chosen. Please give us a pro-life present. I offer you my life. The next day, I came down with deadly pneumonia. Less than 24 hours later, I had double pneumonia, and I was dying in Italy. The only good thing is I was leading a pilgrimage of doctors and nurses. <laughs> So I had like 25 doctors in my, in my little room. Give me antibiotics and steroids and all the medications. I was so sick, they had to go on and finish the pilgrimage without me. I said, well, bring me please to the Franciscan monastery close to where we were in Loretto. So they brought me to the monastery and the monks took care of me, the Franciscans in Loretto. You know, that's where the holy house is. The house of Mary and Joseph, right? the house where the angel Gabriel appeared to Mother Mary and she conceived Jesus Christ in her womb. Amen? Amen. It's, it's, in, it's in Rome now, I mean, in Italy now. Well, talk about a pro-life shrine. That's the pro-life shrine of the world. You see what I mean? That's where Jesus was conceived in Mary's womb. I was sick down the street from that shrine. But the day before the election, on Monday, I began to get better. I couldn't believe it because I was dying. And I called my driver and said, you know what, I'm feeling a little better. If I'm better tomorrow, will you bring me there to the shrine on Tuesday, the day of the election? Tuesday morning, I woke up five in the morning and I was quite a bit improved. So I called my driver and she came to pick me up. She's my tour guide's wife and she's Italian. She picked me right up from the monastery, drove me to the shrine. I walked in to the chapel to put on my robes and the bishop walks in. He says, Father, you want to say Mass with me? I said, sure, Bishop. He says, should you be voting? I said, Bishop, I voted in advance. He says, I figured you did. He was just joking. And we said Mass together in the very house where Jesus was conceived in the womb of Mary. And when I said Mass, I saw angels fill the chapel in my spirit Hundreds, if not thousands of angels came into the chapel. Lord, we need a pro-life president. Amen? Amen? And sure enough, God gave him the victory miraculously. Amen? Amen? And I only share that with you to know that God works on a national and international level. Amen? Amen? And even if you have leaders who might be a little bit naughty, first of all, don't throw any stones till you yourself are perfect. Amen? Secondly, pray for them to become holy themselves. Amen? Amen? Well, brothers and sisters, when my fellow priest did the exorcism of the White House a few weeks ago, guess what my fellow priest had in his hand? Well, good, good guess. He had a statue of Our Lady, the statue of Our Lady of Fatima. And guess what President Trump said at the end of the exorcism? May I please keep that statue here in the White House? 
Amen. Amen. So I want you to be aware of a few things that are happening on an international level. And in my own local level in Georgia, where I am, the state of Georgia, we've been praying against abortion for five years. We asked God to make Georgia the holiest nation, the holiest state in the entire nation, an abortion-free state. Pray for that before the Eucharist and with the Rosary. We just elected a new governor a few months ago, Mr. Kemp. He came out on Saturday a week ago and said, I am totally and unequivocally pro-life. And then he said on Sunday, I will make Georgia the first abortion-free state in the country. <laughs> Amen. So, beloved, let's do that for Trinidad. Can we do that here? Let's pray that Trinidad will have no abortions, they will be completely blinded, and perhaps, let's pray for this, that Trinidad becomes a nation of saints. Can we do that? Yes. It'll be the first country canonized together. Yes. Amen? Amen? So I want to give you another weapon that will help you from another approved apparition. And this one took place in Africa, in Nigeria. And there our Lord and Our Lady appeared to a young man named Barnabas out in the woods, right? He wasn't even baptized. And our Lord and Our Lady began to instruct him. He was a teenager and gave him some amazing prayers to the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Can I give you another prayer? Yes. You will each owe me $2 million. Yes. This is from the newly approved Precious Blood Devotion from Nigeria, approved by the bishops. It has an imprimatur. And this prayer you want to use as a deliverance prayer. So the first prayer that we gave you a few minutes ago, you see, is a protection prayer. That's your shield from the enemy. This one now is your sword. This is your offensive weapon. This one will drive out any demons in your family. And I'm telling you, it works. I've been amazed at what I've seen from this prayer. I've been stunned because I have a, a miracle ministry for a long time now, and I see miracles every single day. But I'm not used to seeing this many, this powerful, this easily. This prayer is incredible. This will be one of the most valuable gifts you've ever received in your whole life, is this prayer right here. You're welcome. It's only 12 words. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us. Does anybody speak Spanish here? The preciosissima sangre de Jesucristo, salvanos y al mundo entero. Preciosísima sangre de Jesucristo, sálvanos del mundo entero. Preciosísima sangre de Jesucristo, sálvanos del mundo entero. This is a powerful prayer. Now, I'll give you one guess. Who gave the church this prayer? Okay, you get a second guess. Who gave God's holy church this prayer? Yes, Mother Mary did. Now, you see why that's important? Because Mary always points us to Jesus. Amen? Amen. This didn't come from Jesus. It came from his mama. This is, one of the saints said, when we say Mary, she says Jesus. When we say Mary, she says Jesus. When we say Mary, she says Jesus. Amen? Mama always points us to Jesus. Amen? Amen? And that's always better, you see, for this reason. When I praise my best friend, Jesus, and I love him so much, I'm willing to die for Jesus. I'm not going to die as a martyr. I can actually feel it. I'm glad. I will die for my Jesus. Greater love than this has no man than to lay down his life for his best friend. Amen? Amen. Lord, you lay down your life for me. My life belongs to you. Amen? Amen? Well, brothers and sisters, Mary, when she praises Jesus, he receives praise from perfect lips. Amen? Amen. 
See, when I praise Jesus, even though I'm a faithful priest, he's receiving praise from, you might say, tainted lips, you see, from imperfect lips. My praise is imperfect. But if I go to mama and I say, and she says, Jesus, <laughs> then he gets perfect praise. Amen? Amen. So I say, I say, Mary. She says, Yeshua. That's, that's Aramaic for Jesus. Mary, Yeshua. Then he receives perfect praise. Amen? Amen. Do you get that, everyone? That's why she's important for Baptists and Presbyterians too. Amen? Amen? So Mama taught us this prayer. And she did say to Barnabas, she said to him, if you want to know how to pray well and to please my son Jesus, say this prayer 500 times a day. So who here wants to be totally free and holy? Raise your hand. I'll see you by the coffee pot tomorrow morning 500 times. <laughs> Amen? Amen? So I actually say it year-round myself. And here's how I keep track of it. Mama didn't say this, but maybe she was implying it. You know what I mean? Take your holy beads. Always keep your rosary in your pocket. Amen? Don't go anywhere without it. Always keep it with you. Well, you just say it on the Hail Mary beads. If you go around once your whole rosary on the Hail Mary beads, how many times have you said it? So how many times do you need to go around and say 500? Hey, you're pretty good mathematicians. I think your school system here must be better than ours. So you go around 10 times and you'll have said it 500 times. If you do it in a community, one brother or sister will lead it and the rest will answer. So I want to give you an example, beloved, of maybe one or two, if I have time, of how I've actually used this prayer in amazing ways. Okay? Here's the first one. I was in Texas many years ago. I was doing a healing mass at a parish. I was in the rectory during that week when the housekeeper comes up to me and she says to me, Father, can you please pray over my sister? I said, well, sure, bring her in. And she said to me, Father, she can't get out of bed. Uh, oh, kind of serious. I said, okay, what's her address? She said to me, oh, Father, she doesn't live here. <laughs> it's very interesting to be a priest sometimes. I said, well, where does she live? He said, well, she lives like in an, another city like an hour away. I said, oh, well, you know, I told her I, I don't have time. I had 100 appointments in that one church, 100 literal appointments besides the healing mass. I had like less than a week to get it all done. That's a lot of work, you see, tremendous amount of work. Those appointments, the, thank you, the appointments take a few minutes, you see, they take an hour or more, they're so serious. Like somebody is suicidal, you see, or somebody is, is, has a drug addiction. Well, I said, well, I don't have the time, but I know why God made cell phones. I said, do you have a cell phone? She said, yes. I said, does your sister have a phone? Yes. I said, why don't you get on the line right now? So she called her sister on the phone, the cell phone, and she handed it to me. I whispered to the housekeeper, what is her sickness? I want to know what I was dealing with to pray over it correctly. You know, I, it was, she couldn't get out of bed, so I, you know, I figured like cancer or tuberculosis, you see, multiple sclerosis. You know what she said? Depression. Serious psychiatric depression. Is that a problem in Trinidad too? Yes. Oh, it's a huge problem in the US. And this is serious depression. I said, how long? She said, five years. I said, how long has she been like in bed? She told me five months straight. She's not been out of her bedroom in five months. That's serious depression. Amen? So I asked the housekeeper, is she under the care of a doctor? You gotta be careful when you do things, you see. And she said, yes, a psychiatrist. Is she on medication? Yes, huge psychotropic drugs. Some help, most don't. I said, okay, let me put on the phone. And I, I spoke to the sister, I said, hello, Lupe. 
this is Father Jim. How are you? And she could barely talk back to me. She was so weak, like, you know, lonely, sad, and depressed. Although she had a husband and children, she was really afflicted and could barely talk to me. I said, can I teach you a new prayer, Miss Lupe? And she said, okay, all right. I'm going to teach you a new prayer to Jesus. I want you to say this. I told her the prayer you and I just said. I said, Lupe, I'm going to say most precious blood of Jesus Christ. And you're going to answer, save us and the whole world. Can you do that? She said, okay. It's only six words. So we did it together 10 times on the phone. You won't believe what occurred. First, let's do it now 10 times. You and I, I want to say the first half and you answer. For anyone in this hall who's being afflicted with despair, sadness, hopelessness, guilt, or shame. Amen? Amen. See, I'm getting the tingle from the Holy Spirit again right now. God's going to do some deliverance right now. So anyone here who's struggling with this, let's ask God to lift it from you. I'll say the first half and you answer. This is deliverance. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us and the world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us and the world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us and the world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us and the world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us and the world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us and the world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us and the world. How does that feel? Isn't that powerful? I can feel the anointing in the room. Can you feel that? It just came into the room. When I said it with Lupe over the phone, just like that, ten times, this is what I heard. Father! I feel fire inside of my body! You could even talk two minutes before. I said, good, Lupe. That's my best friend, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Didn't he come down like a fire? Yeah. Isn't he the fire of God? Yes. So I said, Lupe. She said, yes, Father. I said, let's do it again. <laughs> when you're winning, why quit? Amen. Amen. So we said it ten more times over the phone and wait till you hear what happened. But first, we're going to do it. For anyone in your family... In not you yourself, but anyone in your family who's struggling with severe depression or sadness. Are you ready? Would you, you lead me now, and I'm going to answer you. You say the first half, and I'm going to answer you ten times in a row, all together. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us in the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us in the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us in the whole world. Save us in the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us in the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us in the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us in the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us in the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us in the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us in the whole world. Teach us how to count. <laughs> oh, it's a new prayer. I thought I'd add that one on, you know. So when I, when I said it the second time with Lupe like that, so we did 20. On number 20, this is what I heard. Father! Yes, Lupe. I feel electricity up and down my body. And I said, Lupe, God has just set you free. Amen. Amen. She's still free today from depression some 15 years later. Amen. Totally free in three minutes. Amen. Amen. You see what a valuable weapon this is that you have? Why can't we chase every demon off the island? We will just call ourselves St. Patrick. <laughs> Amen. We'll, we'll, we'll rename the country Trinidad of St. Patrick. 
Amen? Amen. Now, I think my time is up. I don't, do I have time for one more example or is it too much time? Oh, one more. Can I give you one more example? Yes. True story. These are all by the public miracles. Do you have in this country a drug addiction problem? Yes. Ooh, baby, I just got the anointing from the Holy Spirit. I guess you do, don't you? Yes. Can I tell you what happened to a young man? This is a true story. Also in Texas, I was doing a healing mass at a church in Texas, and a grandmother showed up with her son, who was in his 20s. He was dying of a drug overdose. She had just brought him to the Catholic Church near Corpus Christi, Texas, from the hospital in Corpus Christi. He was dying of a drug overdose from an illegal drug. However, because he was in his 20s, he had the legal right to sign himself out of the emergency room. He wasn't a minor. The doctors and nurses took his blood test. They could not determine which drug it was, like crack or heroin, you see. They know what it was. So they begged the young man because he was dying. He turned blue and was shaking. They said, please tell us what it is so we can find an antidote for you. He would not tell them because in Texas, even if you're dying, if it's an illegal drug, they arrest you. They do. Now, they won't take you to the jail that day. They put a guard with a gun next to your door, usually two guards, who stand there with a revolver while you're in your hospital bed. When you're well enough to walk, if you don't die, they take you to jail. And it's, it's true in other places too, I'm sure. So the young man was scared to death to go to jail. In a way, I understand, you know what I mean? Who wants to go to jail? I sort of understand that, but that was stupid too, wasn't it? He signed himself out and he, he was a goner. His grandmother was a woman of God. She took him straight to the church because she heard there was a healing mess at that church that night. They brought him there, it was at four o'clock in the afternoon. I heard the call on the rectory and it said, emergency boy dying conference room. So the priest would run down there, you see, to get the sacrament of anointing. I ran down too and looked in the conference room and saw the boy. I looked in his eyes and I saw a demon. Now, you know this, don't you? There is a drug called pharmacon or pharmacia or pharmakia in the New Testament. There's a drug listed by name, I mean, a demon listed by name, whose name is pharmakia. That's where the word pharmaceutical comes from. I'm so anointed by it, I can't talk. So strong, the Holy Spirit on top of me. You need to know this. Behind the drug trade are demons. Period. No if and, ooh, Espiritu Santo, Espiritu Santo, todo cuerpo. My whole body with the Holy Spirit. That's what's behind the drug abuse. Who else wants to kill us and make us act like animals but Satan? Amen? And that's what drugs do. They kill us, they destroy marriages, and they make us act like animals. Amen? That's Satan. The drug demon is pharmakia. He's in the Bible. And when I looked in his eyes, I saw the demon. I've been trained at the Vatican. I know a demon when I see one. And I said to my brothers, the brother priest there, I said, brothers, go take a break. I'm trained as an exorcist, and they were not. And they were worn out. They had their own work to do. So do what you need to do. I'll take care of this one. I sat down with a young man and his grandmother and told the boy, we're calling your mom and dad right now. Of course, the boy said, no. I said, yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. Call your dad and mom right now. He said, they're going to kill me. And I thought, well, you almost died anyway. You know what I mean? I wasn't sure what the problem was. He was dying in front of me. I said, no, they won't kill you. They'll help you. We got them on the phone. They came in 10 minutes. They were marvelous. I gave them the prayer you have in your hands, the very same one. We designed that, by the way. So if you want to make a copy, make a copy. We don't care. We're not in it for the money. You don't owe me anything for this talk. I don't do it for money. I'm in love with God. I do it for God and for you. Amen. We don't do it for money. We do it for God and for you. Amen. Amen. Make a thousand copies and pass them out for free. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And pass the ammunition. You've got the ammunition now. Amen. We said this prayer together. 
I led the first 50. When I did, the young man sitting across from me in the conference room began to scream. But it was not a human scream. Have you ever heard a demon come out of somebody? It was not human. That poor boy, he was howling. I can't even do it. The devil gets hold of him, but when he's coming out, he screams, you see, because he's mad. He's, he's angry. He's like, he's like saying, no, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. Yes, you are. Amen. He screamed bloody murder, a demonic scream, all 50 of them as I led them. At the end of the 50, he got quieter. And I had the father, the daddy lead 50. It's important for the men of Trinidad to stand up and say this prayer and set their families free. Amen. The fathers need to do this. I've seen it a thousand times. When the father joins me in prayer, we get the victory every time. When the father joins me, we win. Amen. Amen. He said it 50 times. And when he did, the boy had stopped the demon screens, but he began to weep out loud. I mean, rough weeping and shaking wildly. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Then mama led it 50 times. He still was crying and shaking, but much milder now. Then I had the grandmother lead 50. He got real subdued, just tears rolling down. The young man led the fifth set of 50. All by himself. We had just done how many? 250, right? Five rounds around. Right, myself, the daddy, the mommy, the grandma, and the young man. 250. Now he could actually say it. He said, let's, let's keep going. We did another 250. So we did how many total? What did Mother Mary say to do every day? We did 500. I'd already done 500 early that morning. But I was doing it again for that family, you see. They did it with me now. When we got, I kid you not, to number 500, the young man said to me, he said, Father! It's gone! Now, you need to know how significant that was. I never once mentioned when I walked in the room, Satan, the devil, possession, or pharmakia. I never mentioned that at all. I didn't want to scare the boy, you see. I just said, let's pray. But when we got done praying, the young man who had the drug demon, he said to me, Father, it's gone! And I said, I know it's gone. God just set you free. Amen. Amen. I said, when you go home, say 500 more. Do you know, beloved, that young man is still free today from drugs? Amen.